The one-way communication with the president's administration is nothing new for the citizens of Kazakhstan. For instance, residents of the Saragash district in the south of the country have written already six letters to Nusultan Nazarbayev. People complain about spending winter in cold shacks. The settlement was damaged by a flood in 2008 and villages were promised compensations and restoration of property. Until now, however, the authorities failed to follow up on their promises. The family of Guljahan Sarsenova calls this shack a home. It has no floors, the ceiling and walls are crumbling, while the foundation has already caved in. About 50 families in the village of Janadawir live in similar conditions since the flood in February of 2008. I was in labor when the flood happened. I remember how I came home and there was water everywhere. I found some dry spot for the baby and started to break the ice because everything was already frozen. Initially we were given about $500 for renovations and told that we were placed second in the queue for the construction of the new house. But since then nobody ever overcame and all commissions have disappeared. For almost three years, 500 families of Saryagash district are trying to fight for their right to housing. They have conducted all independent examination of the damaged constructions. Specialists admitted that the houses are too dangerous. In desperation, dozens of villagers united with the defrauded mortgage holders and decided to hold a rally in Almaty. They recalled that 14 villagers were flooded in 2008 and the authorities promised to include all victims on the assistance list. 500 houses were not included, while those on the list were never constructed. Only people who gave bribes or $2,000 ended up with houses. All others were avoided despite being on the list. The civil rights advocate has the ruling of the prosecutor's office, which discovered flaws in the work of the commission. However, the state officials avoid recalling the story of the old flood. The commission at the national level was making all the decisions. There are some people who were unaffected by the flood, but they still complain about the situation. The villagers of Saryagash have also written six letters to the head of state. Only once they were granted a reply with the president's administration promising to schedule a meeting for December 24th. You're watching the news from Kazakhstan. Starting March 2011, the National Bank plans to free float Tenge, the national currency, said on Tuesday the chief banker of the country, Grigory Marchenko, during the monthly press conference. In addition, the head of the National Bank said there is no longer a need to maintain the asymmetric corridor with the average of 150 Tenge per dollar with the positive and negative fluctuations of 10 and 15 percent, respectively. We believe that the corridor we believe that the corridor introduced last year and expanded this year proved its usefulness. Therefore, we will make a similar proposal for the following year and hope that the board, which includes not only members of the National Bank, will agree with this decision to return to managed float starting next year. In essence, we don't need such a wide corridor. Marchenko says that in 2010, Tenge clearly demonstrated its stability. The National Bank had to intervene only in November and redeem $650 million to prevent the strengthening of the national currency. The chief banker cited the analysts of the Citibank, which predicted the strengthening of Tenge while irresponsible citizens rushed to buy up the national currency. The financier also said that despite the introduction of the managed flow, the National Bank will not allow the exchange adjustment to 142 Tenge per $1. Marchenko said that next year the situation on the foreign exchange market will be similar to 2010, although the extent of possible intervention was not disclosed. Analysts feel this move was predictable and Tenge's free float allows for the greater dominance of monetary authorities in the economic situation of the country. In addition, the usual trend towards strengthening of Tenge will have positively affect banks and will have a negative impact on mining companies, which collect revenues in dollars. Among other things, this may be the next step in the introduction of a united supranational or regional currency within the customs union and the common economic space. The experience of other countries shows that the withdrawal of the state from the exchange market is quite a dangerous and complicated procedure. It should be implemented gradually to avoid provoking speculative attacks. The proceedings between the police and a co-investor of the housing complex Shonzelize, Jan Kozy Bakibayev, are nearing their end. On December 7, the Alatau District Court of Almaty hosted the final debates of the parties. 
On September 28, Jan Kaziba Kibayev and three of his companions were taken to the Alatau District Police Station for organizing an unsanctioned rally near the city administration building, holding posters quoting Nazarbayev. Three hours later, the protesters were released, but they still called the actions of the police unlawful and filed a lawsuit seeking to recover $6,000 in compensation. Bakibayev and his lawyers claim the freedom of assembly is stipulated in the Constitution. In turn, the police consider their actions not a detainment but an escort. Supposedly, the protesters were stopped only to clarify the law and freedom of assembly. For this reason, the police asked the court to dismiss the action, although Bakibayev already said he can accept the settlement. I realize that the process will go on and on, taking up everyone's time. And finally, the 7th Asian Winter Games now have an official anthem in the song The Flame of Asian Games, written by Iskander Hasangalif. The composition was selected through a special competition of the organization directorate. The result, however, is questioned by several other contestants who accuse the organizers of breaking their own selection rules. Iskander Hasangalif's The Flame of Asian Games is chosen as an official anthem of the Winter Asian Games 2011. The song received 2,000 votes out of possible four during the SMS polling. When I wrote the lyrics, I was next to my young colleagues and I believe this song should be performed by young and talented singers. The competition was announced by the organizing committee directorate in August. In search of the anthem, the jury listened to over a hundred songs. However, the results are questioned by the host of the TV program Asian Games Diary, Salamat Amash. He followed the contest from the very start and feels the worthy song was not chosen. I listen to all compositions and I can say that, for instance, Kudai Birgenov doesn't mention sports and yet appears too self-confident. Composers Janar Sanj, Bulat Yelimesov and Yerbalat Kudaybergenov didn't like the competition as well and accused the organizers of violating their own rules. Apparently former jury members ended up in the final top ten. The directorate refutes all accusations saying it was the choice of the people. 4,000 people voted in and we are talking about the song with 50% of the votes. If the difference would be around 1%, then there could be some doubts, but otherwise we are witnessing an overwhelming advantage. A couple of hours before the announcement of the winner, the Vice Minister of Tourism and Sports, Kair Biakuskinbaev, supported his counterpart. The official said he doesn't know which song will become the winner. I cannot really talk about some violations or shortcomings in the work of the Commission because the Ministry of Tourism and Sports was not involved in this process. The directorate of the Asian Games said all top 10 songs will end up in the air up until the Olympics and the anthem, no matter how controversial it is, will be performed at the opening and closing ceremonies. The author of the winning song will be awarded with $6,000 and a place in history. This is it for now. Join us tomorrow for more. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.